As I think Mr. Samir Gambhir would talk a few minutes about the Colgate case and his experience of other instances where uh, not only Delhi High Court but other courts may have touched upon the overlap. So, two quick things, purple of Cadbury and Popeye <laughs> for you to read. Thank you, Varadha. All right, so, so I think the Colgate case, very interesting case and I think this is one of the first case in India in terms of trade dress we talk about. You know, the Colgate was very, uh, you know, the anchor company, when they started making a lot of products, which were, you know, in the same range as the Colgate, Palmolive, or, you know, maybe other companies also, they were more, you know, the, the, the emphasis was only on the tooth powder, you know. The tooth powder, container, the black and white color, that's very important for them. And the point was, the emphasis which the case has been given and the, and, and the, and the, and the defense and the judgment and the judges which focus on the case was, that because they were more worried on the tooth powder rather than other products, because this is a container, they say the container is not copyrighted, container is something you know, which is not trademarked, black and white, white and red color. But you know, they say, look at the target customers of that tooth powder. So that's why you want, you know, that's where the trade dress actually started coming uh, into India. When they say they look at the target customer, it's very, very highly sold product, but it's generally sold in rural India. So when the guy from uh, Gao, he comes, he says, tooth powder dena ji. So he always looks at the white and red color. He doesn't know what the Colgate and all, maybe, you know, perhaps. And that's the reason that that's just the defense they gave. And it's very interesting here. They say, yes, maybe the other products may not be, you know, uh, coming under the trade dress, but that's the, that's the first case of trade dress which was successfully won by Colgate because the same color pattern, you know, that's where, you know, the, you see the eyes of a person, untrained eyes of a person where you can see and you find, oh, this is what I need, uh, black and, uh, sorry, red and white, good powder. You know, one day, second day, third day, after all, he'll start taking that one. He only needs powder. So depending upon the target customer, it was very important. So therefore, whenever we see all these cases where they're overlapping, coexisting, I think most of the judgments have taken care of that, that which are the target customers. And number two, you know, how does it, you know, how do the general, general public sees it? It's, it's, a, it's a matter of, you know, looking at it, you know, if you ask the general people. Uh, if you see the case of Mohanlal in Delhi High Court, they have very, you know, interestingly, they have put it one line. They say, if something is registered in design and then people start taking it as a trademark also, then perhaps there's a case of passing of under trade dress. So that means, you know, once you have registered as a trademark, or oh, sorry, once you are registered as a design, but people take the design as the source of good, source of origin of goods. Sometime, you know, a bottle, for example, you know, dheere, 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 Pepsi ki bottle ko design se hi lagte hai ki ye trademark ho gaya ek se. So in that connection, you know, in that case, it's possible to go for passing off, and even the, you know, uh, case for the passing off for the trade dress also is very important. Look at the case of uh, Ferrero Rocher. There's another company, different name, different company. They started the, you know, the, the chocolate balls in the same kind of a packet. They got a success in trade dress, in fact. So trade dress is in nascent stage, I would agree, but you know, there's a lot of, lot of judges, a lot of people have started realizing that once a design starting to become a trademark in the eyes of public, then there is a possibility to get a, you know, passing of action or a trade action. So basically it has to be seen uh, untrained eyes from the, from the eyes of general public that are you now uh, taking it as source from the design itself then perhaps you know because you know if you are not if you are not if you are registered in trademark perhaps you will not get registered in design but if you are registered in design perhaps after that the design though people start taking it as a trademark then you get a remedy in passing off and then you can get that uh, thing so it's very interesting i think a uh, us may i think 2000, 2001 may case was interesting but to my knowledge, 2003 Colgate case is the, is the starting point of trade dress. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I mean, Priya was actually having a definition of uh, copyright in design up there, 2D. If you actually look at it, there is an exception carved out saying that a design should not be a trademark. So if a design is not a trademark, then what Mr. Gambhir is saying is absolutely correct because uh, initially, if Coca-Cola bottle had a design registration and over a period of 20 years it becomes acquired distinctiveness, then you can start applying for it as a three-dimensional design. Interestingly, 
92C or 92D actually in Trademarks Act says that it should not be a shape which has a function or a, a mechanical function to it. I mean, I'm not getting the exact words here, but 2D of Designs Act and Section 93 of the Trademarks Act are the uh, exceptions to each other. Uh,